when Mr. Wong Rat turned around and saw what Augustus Luke was doing, he cried now. He cried out, "Oh no! Please, Augustus, please! I beg of you not to do that. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands." Augustus called out, "Mrs. Luke, didn't you hear what the man said? Come away from that river at once." This stuff is fabulous," said Augustus, taking not the slightest notice of his mother and all Mr. Wongda. "Gosh, I need a bucket to drink it properly." Augustus cried, "Mr. Wongda, hop- hopping up and down and waddling his stick in the air, you must come away. You are dirtying my chocolate." Augustus cried, "Mrs. Luke, Augustus." Cried Mr. Lu, but Augustus was deaf to everything except the call of his enormous stomach. He was now lying full length on the ground with his head far out over the river, lapping up the chocolate like a dog. Augustus shouted, "Mrs. Lu, you'll be giving that nasty coat of yours to about million, a million people all over the country." Be careful, Augustus! Shouted Mr. Luke. You are leaning too far out. Mr. Luke was absolutely right, for suddenly there was a shriek, and then a splash, and into the river went Augustus Luke, and in one second he had disappeared under the brown surface. Save him! Screamed Mrs. Luke, growing white in her in the face. And waving her umbrella about, he'll drown. He can't swim a yard. Save him, save him. Good heavens, woman," said Mister Luke. "I'm not diving in there. I'll drop my best suit." Augustus Luke's face came up again to the surface, painted brown with chocolate. Help! 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 He yelled. Fish me out. Don't just stand there," Mrs. Loop screamed at Mr. Loop. "Do something." "I am doing something," said Mr. Loop, who was now taking off his jacket and getting ready to dive into the chocolate. But while he was doing this, the wretched boy was being sucked closer and closer towards the mouth of one of the great pipes that was dangling down into the river. Then all at once, the powerful suction took him, took hold of him completely, and he was put under the surface, and then into the mouth of the pipe. The crowd on the river bank waited breathlessly to see where he would come out. There he goes! Somebody shouted, pointing upwards. And sure enough, because the pipe was made of glass, Augustus looked. Could be clearly seen shooting up inside it, head first like a put like a torpedo. Help, mother! Please, screamed Mrs. Luke. Augustus, come back to, come back at once. Where are you going? It is a wonder to me," said Mr. Luke. "How about how that pipe is big enough for him to go through it?" It isn't big enough," said Charlie Bucket. "Oh dear, look! He's slowing down." "So he is," said Grandpa Joe. "He's going to stink," said Charlie. "I think he is," said Grandpa Joe. "By golly, he has stuck," said Charlie. "It's his stomach that's done it," said Mister Luke. "He's blocked the whole pipe," said Grandpa Joe. "Smash that pipe!" yelled. Mrs. Luke still waving her umbrella. Augustus, come out of there at once! The watchers below could see the chocolate swishing around the boy in the pipe, and they could see it building up behind him in a solid mass, pushing against the blockage. The pressure was terrific. Something had to give. Something did give, and that something was Augustus. Woof!
up he shot again like a bullet in the barrel of a gun. He's disappeared, yelled Mrs. Luke. Where does that pipe go? Quick, call the fire brigade. Keep calm, cried Mr. Wonka. Keep calm. My dear lady, keep calm. There is no danger, no danger whatsoever. Augustus has gone a little journey, that's all. A most interesting little journey, but he'll come out of it just fine. You wait and see. How can he possibly come out just fine, snapped Mrs. Luke. He'll be made into marshmallows in five seconds. Impossible, cried Mr. Wonka. Unthinkable. Inconceivable. Absurd. He could never be made into marshmallow. And why not, may I ask, shouted Mr. Snoop. Because that pipe doesn't go anywhere near it. That pipe, that the one Augustus went up, happens to lead directly to the room where I make a most delicious kind of strawberry flavored chocolate coated fudge. Then he'll be made into a strawberry flavored chocolate coated fudge, screamed Mrs. Luke. My poor Augustus, they'll be selling him by the pound all over the country tomorrow morning. Quite right, said Mr. Luke. I know I'm right, said Mrs. Luke. It's beyond a joke, said Mr. Luke. Mr. Wong doesn't seem to think so, cried Mrs. Luke. Just look at him. He's laughing his head off. How dare you laugh like that when my boy just gone up the pipe, you monster, she shrieked, pointing her umbrella at Mr. Wongra as though she were going to run him through. You think it's a joke, do you? You think that sucking my boy up into the fudge room like that is just one of the great, big, colossal jokes? You'll be perfectly safe, said Mr. Wongra, diddling slightly. He'll be chartered fudge, shrieked Mrs. Luke. Never, cried Mr. Wonka. Of course he will, shrieked Mrs. Luke. I wouldn't allow it, cried Mr. Wonka. And why not, shrieked Mrs. Luke. Because the taste would be terrible, said Ms. Mr. Wonka. Just ima imagine it. A drastic flavored chocolate coated glue. No one would buy it. They most certainly would, cried Mr. Luke indignantly. I don't want to think about it, shrieked Mrs. Luke. Nor do I, said Mr. Wonka. And I do promise you, madam, that your darling boy is perfectly safe. If he is perfectly safe, then where is he? snapped Mrs. Luke. Lead me to him this instant. Mr. Wonka turned around and clicked his finger sharply. Click, 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 three times. Immed immediately, an Oompa Loompa appeared, as if from nowhere, and stood beside him. The Oompa Loompa bowed and smiled, showing beautiful white teeth. His skin was rosy white, his long hair was golden brown, and the top of and the top of his head came just above the height of Mr. Wonka's knee. He wore the usual deer skin slung over his shoulder. Now listen to me, said Mr. Wonka, looking down at the tiny man. I want you to take Mr. and Mrs. Luke to the fudge room and help them to find your son. He's just gone up the pipe. The Oompa Loompa took one look at Mrs. Loop and exploded into peals of laughter. Oh, do be quiet, said Mr. Wonka. Control yourself. Pull yourself together. Mrs. Loop doesn't think it's at all funny. You can say that again, said Mrs. Loop. Go straight to the fudge room, Mr. Wonka said to the Oompa Loompa. And when you get there, Take a long stick and start poking around inside the big chocolate mixing barrel. 
I'm almost certain you'll find him in there. But you'd better look sharp. You have to hurry. If you leave him in the chartered mixing barrel too long, he's liable to get poured out into a fudge boiler. And that really would be a disaster, wouldn't it? My fudge will become quite uneatable. Mrs. Luke let out a shriek of fury. I'm joking, said Mr. Wongtra, diddling madly behind his beard. I didn't mean it. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Mrs. Luke and Mr. Luke. Goodbye. I'll see you later. And Mr. and Mrs. Luke and their tiny astronaut hurried away. The five Oompa Loompas on the far side of the river suddenly began hopping and dancing about and beating wildly upon a number of very small drums. Adrestus Luke, they, ch- they chanted. Adrestus Luke, Adrestus Luke, Adrestus Luke. Grandpa, cried Charlie, listen to them, Grandpa. What are they doing? Shush, whispered Grandpa Joe. I think they are going to sing a song. Adrestus Luke, chanted the Oompa Loompas. Adrestus Luke, Adrestus Luke, the great big greedy Nintampo. How long could we allow these bees to dodge and dazzle, feed and feast on everything he wanted to? Great start, it simply wouldn't do. However long this pig might live, we are positive it never did. Even the smallest bit of fun or happiness to anyone. So what we do in cases such as this, we use the gentle touch. And carefully we take the breath and turn him into something that will give great pleasure to us all. A doll, for instance, or a ball, or marbles, or a rocking horse. But this revolting boy of trust was so unutterably vile, so greedy foul, so greedy foul and infantile, he left a most disgusting taste inside our mouths, and so in Haze, we chose a thing that, come what may, would take okay. the... Okay. I found this on the web for choose a thing that come what may. Check it out. Check it out. Would take the nasty taste away. Come on, we tried. The time is right to send him shooting up the pipe. He has to go. He has to be. And very soon he is going to see inside the room to which he's gone. So funny things are going on. But don't, dear children, be alarmed. A duster slip will not be harmed. Although of course he must be we must admit he will be altered quite a bit. He'll be quite changed from what he's seen when he's going through the fudge machine. Slowly the wheels go round and round, the trucks begin to grind and pound. A hundred knives go slice, slice, slice. We add some sugar, cream and spice. We boil him for a minute more until we are absolutely sure that all the greed and all the dull is brought away for once and all. Then out he comes, and now by grace, a miracle has taken place. This boy who only just before was loathed by men from shore to shore. This greedy brute, his loser's ear, is loved by people everywhere. And for who could hate or bear a grudge against a bus- luscious bit of fudge? I told you they love singing, cried Mr. Wongtra. Aren't they delightful? Aren't they charming? But you mustn't believe a word they say. It's all nonsense, every bit of it. Are the Oompa Loompas really joking, Grandpa? asked Charlie. Of course they're, they're joking, answered Grandpa Joe. They must be joking at least. 
I hope they're joking, don't you?